can't see you. Oh, we can't. Obesity has been described as an epidemic of the 21st century. According to the CDC, obesity affects 39.8% of adults and 18.5% of children. However, in 1976, 5% of children were considered obese. <clears throat> there has been speculation on how this epidemic came to pass. Is it going to the grocery store and grabbing processed foods only to sit at the TV for the third hour in a row to eat it? There's also something else to look at, and that's poverty. As a paramedic, I have seen a rise of adult diseases in children, such as hypertension and type 2 diabetes. In the U.S., the Census Bureau states that 11.8% of Americans live in poverty, with the median income being a little under $60,000 a year. Can a parent's income create harmful situations for children? Most people believe being poor means children have less chances of being obese due to food scarcity. The University of Michigan Medicine published a study in 2016 of the correlation between income and obesity. The initial study showed a higher risk of obesity among Hispanic and African American children. Along with Native Americans, these are considered the ethnicities with the highest poverty rate. However, new evidence leads to believe that children who have limited access to recreational activities and healthier grocery stores are also at higher risk. Imagine you are the single mother of two school-aged children. You can opt for a cheap meal at McDonald's after leaving your second job rather than a meal of baked chicken and fresh vegetables. The same mother lives in a low-income neighborhood where violent or rampant. Does she allow her children to go outside to do recreational activities, and can she afford to put them in organized sports? Most obese children grow into obese adolescents and obese adults. So I thought back to my own childhood being obese, as so was my family, though we weren't particularly impoverished. How does that happen? The South has been notably the poorest part of the U.S. for hundreds of years. It also has traditions that around that. For example, chicken and pastry or chicken and dumplings can be made with chicken, flour, baking powder, butter, and milk. All cheap ingredients that serve other purposes, high in fat, high in carbs, meant to fuel hard labor in an agricultural community. A dense dinner made from cheap items that can be stretched for days, and this is used also by mothers today in poverty. The CDC states that childhood obesity isn't exactly equal by race either, with the prevalence of obesity above the poverty line in white non-Hispanic households. <clears throat> it is also more prevalent in African American and Hispanic children below the poverty line. So you have most of the poverty is going to be your African American, your Hispanics, your children, most likely to be obese, or your African American Hispanics. However, with the obesity rates plummets in households where parents don't have adequate income and a college degree. So education plays a role as well. Where poverty doesn't play a role, a lack of education can also mean a lack of understanding and proper nutrition. So what do we do? Our food allocation programs have already attempted to tackle this issue with WIC allowing certain people to buy certain items that are healthier choices. We should also be able to do this with all our food allocation programs. Providing education to struggling families and Americans would also be helpful. One other thing is improving the nutritional value of food served in schools. Jessica Black, the Vice President of Community Health for the American Heart Association, studied the important factors of teaching kids how to make healthy choices. Our studies have shown that children get 50% of their daily caloric intake from school. She noted a decrease in obesity with school systems that have healthier options. In conclusion, it was previously thought that race determined the chances of obesity where it may. It is proven that socioeconomic status 
and education play a higher role. As we discussed, in multiple studies have been performed by university and government agencies proving the prevalence of childhood obesity. We also discussed the stigma of less money means less food when in fact it means less quality food. And we discussed the educational status of parents can increase or decrease the likelihood of obesity in children. We also discussed how I believe we can improve by providing healthier choices in school and food allocation programs. And as I stated before, obese children will most likely become obese adults. And improving our rates of obesity in children will improve our obesity rates overall.